In this presentation, we're going to practice creating another invoice from a billable expense. In other words, we entered the purchase order, we then entered the expense to pay for the inventory, and we assigned that to be billable. Now we're going to be creating an invoice that will be linked to that billable expense. It'll help us to populate and remember the, how to populate the billable expense. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. Before we go in any further, let's take a look at the story. We're in the desktop version, just to look at the flow chart again. The flow chart, the story we have here is a customer came into the shop. The customer said, hey, I would like this guitar. We said, that's great. We don't have it in that color, but that's all right. We'll order it for you. We ordered it from our vendor with a purchase order, indicating the customer on the purchase order, not so the vendor has any benefit from that, but so that we can then link the purchase order to the guitar that we receive. We then received the guitar. So we got the guitar and the bill along with it from our vendor. We entered that information, entering the guitar as well as paying for uh, the guitar at that point in time, increasing the inventory. And then uh, now, of course, we want to take that information and we want to um, bill the client for it. So now we can turn around and say, hey, we're going to link this and populate our invoice. Our invoice will be helped to be populated along with the bill. So we're now going to set up the invoice and create uh, that link. Notice the link doesn't work, so it doesn't work in the sales receipt. So if we were to say, hey, come on into the shop and we'll uh, process you the guitar. Uh, if they if they come into the shop and we make them a sales receipt, you're not going to have that same link, but you can obviously then just create the sales receipt with the purchase item order. So let's just take a look at that. If I then uh, minimize this, we're now going to say, okay, so now we have the guitar. We've been reminded that we can now invoice the client for the guitar. So if I go back up top and I say I need new, and I go to make an invoice, and I now have the guitar for Music Stuff Store. That's the customer, Music Stuff Store. So I'm going to type in Music Stuff Store. And then uh, there it is, and tab. We then have this billable item down below. So we have the billable item that we can add. Just to note, the other form that you could use is a sales receipt, and you typically won't have this item pop up on it. So let's just test that out just so you can see that. If I was to close this out without saving it, I'm going to close it. Do you want to leave without saving? I do. We're going to leave it without saving. And let's just test the same thing out if I created a sales receipt, which is the other form they would have. If they came into the shop and we created a sales receipt, we're going to say make a sale up top. And we'll go through the similar process. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so that it doesn't, um, the size doesn't throw anything off. I'm going to type in music store stuff, music stuff store, <laughs> and then tab. And you'll note we don't get the same kind of pop-up screen. So you can still populate, in other words, the sales receipt. If they come into the shop, you can populate the sales receipt and just make sure you pick the correct item down below, and that's fine. But that linking process, that kind of reminder process, uh, isn't something uh, that, would, that would show up on the sales receipt. I also want to show this billable linking process because it's something that's often used for other types of things as well, such as contractors and whatnot will often use um, this kind of expense linking process so that when they when they have something that they purchase for a particular item or a particular job or whatnot, they can basically pull that over specifically to the invoice. So this linking process uh, is just something we want to work into our, our practice problems because depending on the industry, uh, it is something that's often going to be there. So I'm going to say, do you want us to leave? I'm going to save or not save that again. And let's go back into the invoice. So we're going to go into the invoice. And let's do this again. We're going to say music store stuff or music stuff store. That's the one we want. So I'm going to pick that one up. I'm going to say tab. Then we're going to have our pop up to the left. So that's going to be the item I want. I want to pick that up. Now I'm remembering that that's a billable item. So I'm going to pick it up at cost. So I, need, I then need to change it to the retail price in this example problem. So I'm going to add it here. And so there we have it. We have the linked item down below. Then I'm going to say the date is going to be 125. So we'll keep that as the date. And then there's our product down below with the GSB item. So again, you can imagine if you're if you're a contractor or something like that, and you're working on on particular jobs, and you go buy buy things for a particular job, that you could then uh, link those very easily from the payment settings that you put into the job, so that they pull over to the invoice, and there'll be items then that you can you can add onto the invoice. You can list out the items: wood, you know, plumbing supply, whatever you got on on the actual invoice that's one way that you can kind of link this stuff out in that type of scenario as well same kind of feature that we're that we're using here so here then we got to say okay that's but for this setting that's going to be the 
uh, retail price, I mean, that's going to be the cost. We need the what we're selling it for, basically the retail price. So I'm going to retype in get GBS, GBS or GSB, GSB. And that's the one we want. I'm going to say that's the one I want. And then I'm just going to populate that rate up top. So this is what we're selling at 477.40. And so there we have that. And then the one down below, I'm going to remove it. So I'm going to remove this one now. So there we have it. So that's going to be our, our invoice at the current price. Uh, and let's see what happens. We're now at the sales tax or after sales tax at 851.25. What's going to happen when, when we record this? We're down to the same invoice kind of process. So I'll do this a bit more quickly. We're on the invoice. Therefore, accounts receivable is going to be going up. Accounts receivable is going to go up by the full amount, 851.25. That's what people owe us. Then we're going to say the other side is going to go to sales. That's going to be the 777.4, not including the sales tax. The difference between the two is the sales tax, which is going to be increasing the liability account for sales tax payable. Also, there's going to be a decrease to inventory for an amount not on this, this sheet, but it's the amount that was here before, which I believe was 598, the cost, inventory going down by the cost using the weighted average method. The other side going to cost of goods sold and expense, the expense of us consuming the inventory in order to generate revenue, the difference between the sales and the cost of goods sold, the net increase in net income. Let's go ahead and record this and check that out. I'm going to say save and close. And then I'll close this one out. And let's go to our reports then. We're going to go to the reports down below. And since we've seen this before, I'm going to do this a little bit more quickly using the report that's a little bit more quick to use, and that being the trial balance the trusty trial balance we can see all the accounts in one form and you know drill into them and look at the activity and whatnot all with the tb trial balance so i'm going to say 010120 123120 run that report then i'm going to close the old hamburger i'm going to make it a little bit larger so we can see it i'm going to go to that 125 that's what i like the 125 then we're going to be in accounts receivable if i select the accounts receivable and scroll down this one was to who did we this was music store stuff music stuff store so there it is and there's the 851 that's at the sales price so the 851 i won't go into the invoice because we've seen it before i'm going to go back and then the other side then is going to be in sales so sales of the product so here's the sale of the product i'm going to select that item and then scroll down and here's the music stuff store there and that's on the books for the 777.74. That's the sales price not including the sales tax. So it's less than what we saw in the receivable because the tax was included in what we expect to get from the customer. The difference between the two being sales tax. So that's going to be a liability. We go back to the trustee trial balance. Liability is going to be down here. Uh, so it's in the liability section. It's an order assets, liability, equity, income, and expense. So we're in the liability section, sales tax payable. For some reason, QuickBooks puts the vendor in there. It's California Department of Tax. That's who we pay for the sales tax. They make us collect it and give it to them. And that's going to be for the music stuff store for these three items that make up the sales tax there. And then I'm going to scroll back up top. Also, we see that uh, the inventory is going to be going down. So we know the inventory goes down. So the inventory is going to be an asset. So there's the inventory. It's going to be going down, not by the sales price or the sales price plus the sales tax, but by the cost. So it's going to be going down by the costs for Music Stuff Store, which in this case was the 598. So there is that. And then one more thing, if we go back to our uh, TB trial balance, we also have the cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold here. And the cost of goods sold for Music Stuff Store is right there. And there's the 598 there as well.